I always have to break the news at the university setting to the students. And I said, well, I'm going to have to break the bad news for you. <laughs> Basically, you know, aging happened to everyone. You're going to be old one day. You can avoid it. My name is Emi Kiyota. I'm an environmental gerontologist. Um, I'm also a founder and the director of Ibasho. We aim to challenge negative perception of aging and social role of elders by creating a place where older people can find a place to be contributing to their communities. My mentor, Dr. Weissman, taught me two things that really changed my um, way of seeing. He said, you know, society actually shape how buildings should look like and architecture reinforce those preconceived notions of people in their head. Think about nursing home. You actually see the nursing home. It is not positive. So if it's like museum, that will be a positive cycle because, you know, you want to design the best and very interesting environment where people can have a special feeling and experience. But when we think about older people's place, we kind of have this notion of like, oh, it's okay to warehouse older people almost. And I kind of wanted to challenge and see how design process can change and how we can actually educate designers actually how they think about older people and how they think about environment where older people live. I actually lived in nursing home to try to understand the experience of institution. And at one point I realized no one was happy in the institution where we, where we, we were designing. Somehow we spent so much effort and so much resources designing something no one wants to live in. But we are still keep on going. That's where my turning point was. And I thought, you know what? I'm really shocked how little we listen to older people when we design nursing homes. You know, we have experts. When you talk about users, we talk about, you know, administrator. We talk about maybe doctors. We talk about, you know, just nurses. We never really maybe trusted enough to older people to tell us how they want to live their life. <laughs> which, you know, it was a lot of like a strange question came out. What I found that it's interesting is that institutional care, it's universal. No matter where you are, you see exactly the same institution all over for the rest of the world. So the institutional culture is another culture we have to actually talk about. Everyone wants to be helpful to others, regardless of their age. However, current system treat elders as people whom we have to care for, rather than treating them as people who can contribute to their communities. We need to recognize the elders as variable assets and resources to their community, empowering them to be a change agent who challenge the prevalent narrative of aging and the social role of elders. How can each of us be a part of co-designing shared future for elders across globe in which aging is not something to fear, but an opportunity to appreciate the potential within us or for meaningful growth throughout their lives? Well, I think elder care and the designing for older people or, you know, just caring older people, it's slightly different because, you know, humanity is there and the humility is also there. The problem that we face in aging in general is the paternalistic approach of providing care and paternalistic approach of designing something for them. We have to care for them rather than, you know, just sit down and figure out what they can actually teach us. So I think that design part, it is a skill uh, <laughs> to really be quiet and listen. Two things we don't think about. One, it's just like older people are like economically just helping for a certain country by the remittances, but also how they spend their money to benefit directly to younger generations. Um, because a lot of time people think we have to look after older people. But reality is that they are really do look after younger generation in their household in that way. 
I think the COVID exposed what existing issues were about aging. COVID did not invent social isolation. COVID did not invent high infection of virus. It was really the problem existed. So the COVID really exposed to it. The issue with older people, but at the same time, it was such an equity issues, actually, that really brought up because the kind of elderly facilities in certain zip code was much more susceptible than others. I think we learned that in the lesson in the COVID time, you know, a lot of older people were infected, you know, very high percentage of people in the nursing home was infected. You know, it just, it's very sim- you know, simple because that's just warehousing older people in a large space and in the most efficient way. But, you know, if you want to think about, you know, taking the community as almost a care ecosystem, if we could just transform the community and housing is one, just try to make the housing much more accessible so that people don't have to move because your house is not accessible. If we can just create like a design community, even like in a smaller scale, where older people with memory problem can actually walk around in their neighborhood, then they can stay at home. And why are not we doing this? Human being actually sent people to moon many years ago. <laughs> and we are talking about like, you know, going to Mars and all this. And why can't we keep our own people within their own community in their own home? I feel like we're just so lazy. We should really think about adaptable design base it has to be flexible enough and adaptable enough for people to be able to age in place. That's one. And I think second one is how flexible can we actually make it? Who decide? A lot of time, architects are the ones decide how the design should be. I propose always embracing imperfection gracefully. And uh, for the Ibasha project we do, we intentionally, purposefully don't complete the building. Uh, it is sound enough and it's safe enough. All the people has to use the space and decide where they're going to go and how they are going to be use it. it. It's a little challenge, first of all, for designers to set aside their sense of perfections to say, OK, I'm just going to stop designing to this level. That's a really a challenging thing for many an architect. It has to be your users who has to complete it. People has to just own the space. Basically, you have to be a part of creation. So I think I would love to be able to see designers trust older people enough to say, you know, I really want you to show your creativity in this to complete this. So that's going to be all yours. You know, that's how I like to see that happen. I love to be able to see more young people actually being involved in the designing for space for older people and really sit down with older people to learn about the experience because young person are inexperienced being old because they've never been old. <laughs> you know, one of the things that architecture school don't do well is the communication skills for designers to talk to people who are not like them. If we were to be able to have students really learn how to speak to older people and really design the space that is so much more interesting for the older people, because we really do need the creativity from younger people. After the COVID time, we really do need to reimagine elder care and housing for older people. And I really hope that students will be able to just be educated to create place experience more than space itself. Architecture can actually reshape how society has to think. If we are going to start to build beautiful and very functional community and the buildings where all the people living in, we might actually start to change the way the people who occupies that space.